So we're finally to the fourth order runge cutta method, and the fourth order runge cutta method is the one that uh, that is really commonly used. And, and so this is the classical form because, like the other methods that we we already talked to the, first, the second order method and third order method, uh, there are an infinite number of possible uh, fourth order runge cutta methods depending on uh, what we choose uh, for these values. But uh, the ones that that we choose for the classical fourth order runge cutta method look like this. So yi plus one is equal to yi plus one six k one plus two k two plus two k three plus k four times h. Uh, so again, this is this is our integral estimate. Um, uh, one six k one plus two k two plus two k three plus k four times h. And again, k one is is f of x i y i. K two is f of x i plus one half h. So what we see here, and 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 then k three also. What we see here is that k one uh, just uses uh, the whole step x i. Um, it starts it starts at f x i y i. Uh, just like the Euler method, that's the K1 uh, uses that, and then the K2 uh, goes only halfway uh, um, there, fxi plus one half h, so it goes halfway there. K3 goes halfway there uh, in in the x. K4 also, uh, or K4 actually goes all the way there, and so you can compare this to Hans method where we had one that uh, that was just uh, starting and then the other one that was all the way there and and we put those two together to get our new estimate phi. Uh, here we do the same thing here let me uh, they give a nice visualization um, so this is a graphic from the book of this method and the other methods can be visualized in a similar way because each one of these is an f of f of some x and y and because it's an f of some x and y it's going to be some slope and so uh, this just shows that the the slope k1, the first slope is is based at that initial point. You can see it's based at that initial point, and it, it it's it's evaluated there because that's the xi, that's the xi point right here uh, where we evaluate where we evaluate it. Okay. The next one, as I said here, so then we get come up with k2. So that's this right here. That's the slope at this point is k2. And that, uh, again, is evaluated at xi plus 1 half h. See the 1 half, xi plus 1 half. That's where that's evaluated. At, evaluated. Uh, we use k2. Again, move, we move from k1 halfway there. We're going along the slope of k2. And when we get there, we use that that value, and we evaluate the function uh, the, the the f of x y to get our k3. Uh, we use the k3 to come down here all the way, but we step all the way uh, to get our k4. All right. So once we have our k1, our k2, our k3, and our k4, we put them all together, and we come up with our phi that we use to take this this slope phi, the phi that we use to take the entire step, and that becomes our our step. So again, this is this is uh, you can make a similar visualization uh, for the other methods, but this is the visualization for the classical um, runge cutta uh, fourth order, and this is uh, so we can go higher order runge cutta methods, and I'll show you one higher, but uh, the the trade-off between the complexity to program these things and and to worry about uh, all the other problems that can come in and reducing um, uh, complexity and programming effort versus the amount of accuracy you get people usually stop at the fourth order runge cutta method so uh, there we go again this is fourth order runge cutta